Hi there, welcome to UIW Alumni Corner. I'm your host, Hannah Cash, and I'm here with alumna Joy Bergen. Thank you for joining us, Joy. Oh, absolutely. It's an absolute joy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I want to talk to you about your college journey, obviously mm -hmm. here at UIW, but your college journey didn't start here at UIW. Uh, it, did not. it began at UTSA, and then you mm -hmm. went to Northwest Vista. But why did you choose UIW? You know, I like to say that I've been to every college in San Antonio, <laughs> and UIW was by far my favorite. Um, no beef with the other schools, of course. <laughs> but, you know, when I started at UTSA, I don't think I really had much direction, which is why I decided to step back, go to community college, so I could save some money and still kind of get some of those basics out of the way and get a feel for what I might be interested in. And it was actually UIW TV. I saw UIW TV and I thought, you know what, that looks really fun. And that was before I even thought about doing journalism as a career. I just said, that organization looks really fun. I'm going to go to that school and get involved in that organization. And that'll be my fun hobby off on the side. And then obviously the rest speaks for itself. I just fell in love with it and I just keep doing it. So here I am. I was going to ask you, how was your experience at UIW? But it sounds like a very positive oh, yes. one. Uh, it was wonderful. You know, all of the people here, especially the Com Arts Department, it's such a small department, um, but with such hardworking and genuine people. And so it was really great to be able to work together um, with those people here. And like I said, the professors, just amazing. Um, you really feel like you have that one-on-one -on -one support system here that you don't necessarily find at some of those bigger college campuses um, that I've also been a part of. What kind of student were you, Joy? I'd like to say I was straight A's. I wasn't <laughs> exactly, but I was someone who uh, had a blast being here. I loved school, especially when I was here, uh, and especially since it was so project-based. Um, you know, my professors will tell you I didn't show up to every class, but I did show up 100% when I was here, and I always did all the projects with as much energy. I put everything I could into that because I enjoyed it so much, and it was such a great learning experience. And so that's how I would describe myself as a student. <laughs> what, what kind of things were you able to take advantage of here at UIW, like opportunities that other students watching can also do? Absolutely. I think that going back to, you know, when I started, the one thing that I really wanted was to get involved in UIW TV specifically, but I think to any student, get involved in any organization that you may be remotely interested in because that really gives you an avenue to not just learn, but put your skills to use. Um, you know, this medium really gave me the opportunity to use what I was learning in class to make something. And I like to tell students all the time, don't wait until you graduate. Don't wait until you have your first job or whatever it is you're waiting for. Don't wait for it. Do something amazing where you are. And there are a lot of opportunities here at UIW to do that. UIW TV was that opportunity for me. You talk about UIW TV, you were very successful in it. You had six Emmys, which we have one yes. here. You were also the best on air talent in Texas for two years in a row. And um, what kind of characteristics were you bringing to the table in the UIW TV newsroom, but now at Fox when you're working? You know, oh gosh, I don't know. I think the, the first thing that comes to my mind is just excitement and love for what I do. I think when you're enjoying what you're doing and you're really passionate about it, it's easy to put your best foot forward and to give it everything you've got. I mean, you show up with a smile, you're happy to do whatever it is the task is that day. It just makes it fun, and when you're having fun, people notice, and, and it makes you successful. And post-graduation, you jumped straight into work. You're still in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. How has that experience been so far? It's been a whirlwind. Um, you know, like I said, don't wait until you graduate. I got that internship as soon as I could, once things kind of opened up after the pandemic. Um, and from there, I was really able to make some connections. And uh, when my internship ended, I asked, hey, you know, can I keep sticking around and just shadow people. I know you can't continue my internship. And my news director said, I'll do you one better. Do you want a part-time job? And I was like, yes. So I did that. I was part-time as an associate producer until I graduated. When I graduated, I had the option to move out of San Antonio, maybe to a smaller market and see if I could get on air, or I could stay as a producer here in San Antonio and try to work my way up. That's the option that I went with. I was married, and so you know I wanted to stay here with my family and everything, and that's what I did. And 
within six months, I uh, had my first on-air job there at Fox SA and News 4 San Antonio as the traffic anchor. So that's what I did. Um, how has it been? It's just been super exciting and a huge growing experience. I feel like I've learned more in the past two years than I did in the whole rest of my life. <laughs> uh, but it's been a lot of fun. And working in a newsroom is very stressful. It you're is. live, you're on air, things can go wrong. What did UIW, what takeaways did you have from UIW that helped you prepare for working in a high stress environment? I think the teamwork element of it, you know, we all mess up and the whole team feels it when we do, right? Um, that's part of it. it. Everybody has to kind of pull their weight and everybody drops the ball here or there, but it's that camaraderie and the, hey, you know, Tomorrow's another day, and we're all in the same boat here, and we're all trying to make something beautiful and something that we're proud of, and to be able to just pick each other up in those moments um, is something that I've, I've learned, that I learned here, and that I like to think I've carried over in my professional life as well, is being able to work through those tougher issues as a group, and not assigning blame, but just fixing an issue, you know? Mm -hmm. And you, you said, after your internship, you just wanted a job. You wanted to find something you were asking producers and getting your foot into the broadcasting world is very difficult. What would you, what advice would you give people who are trying to get into that broadcasting world? I would say don't limit yourself. Um, I see all the time people don't even apply for a job because they don't consider themselves qualified. The job that I, before I worked at News 4 and Fox SA, I actually worked at iHeartRadio. I was a news anchor for, for them. Um, also, while I was in school, so again, do what you can now. Um, when I applied for that job, they were looking for people with three years of experience in on-air journalism. I had none, and they were asking for someone with a degree. I did not have that. I said, you know what? This is what I want to do. I'm just going to apply just for funsies. And then I got the job. And I think what people don't realize is that a lot of those requirements they're just looking for someone who has the skills and they're trying to weed out people who don't have the skills. Don't let those specific requirements stop you when you know you have the skills. Um, so I would just say, do not limit yourself. Apply for every opportunity. If you know that you have those skills, prove that you have those skills. Um, that's what I did. They had me come in an audition. If you have the skills, just show it. And the best way that you can build those skills and showcase those skills is things like UIWTV or any other organization or, or internship that you can do while you're in school. It, it lets you build a showcase. You can show people, hey, maybe I don't have three years of experience outside of college, but I have the skills. Um, that would be my advice. And you're now a traffic anchor for News 4 Fox San Antonio. Mm -hmm. If you compare who you are now to who you were as a freshman, what would you say are the biggest differences? Uh, <laughs> I think as a freshman, the world seemed very big and unattainable. And as I mentioned, you know, I, I felt very directionless. I didn't know what I wanted to major in. I was just trying to do the next right step. Um, and I think that that's a great practice for anyone who doesn't know what the big plan is. Just do the next right thing. For me, that was continuing my college education and figuring out what I wanted to do. I think now, in the past couple of years, a mindset that I've developed is that you can do anything. Just do it. Just do it. Um, and that's, I, I don't know, just the idea of like, if you want to do something, do it. We all have autonomy and you can do whatever you want to do. And that sounds so cliche <laughs> to say, ah, oh, just do it. Anyway, but I don't know. I just feel like that's something that I've learned is, and also, being okay with starting somewhere. Um, I don't. I think also freshman Joy thought you either d did something or you didn't, and there wasn't a concept of you start somewhere, and it takes sometimes years to get to where your plan is. But to understand that and be okay with starting where you are. You were you were born and raised in San Antonio. I was. Do you have plans to stay in San Antonio? What does the future look like for Joy? You know, I love San Antonio. Like you said, it's my hometown. I really love being here. I don't have any plans in the near future to leave. I do have um, family, or my husband has family in North Carolina. Now I did visit there and the climate was very nice. <laughs> it was not as hot and humid. So if I were to go anywhere, 
maybe there, but I really have no plans to leave. Like I said, I just love San Antonio. Well, good luck for the rest Thank of the you. future. Thank you for coming on the Thank show. Thank you so much for having me. You have me. such a lovely, great, high energy. Thank you. And I think you're not just an addition to a newsroom, but to just the <laughs> public in general. Thank you so well, much for coming you. on. And thank you guys for watching. Um, join us after the break. We'll be sitting down with Antonio Bocanegra. I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. Hi there, welcome back to UIW Alumni Corner. I'm Hannah Cash and I'm here with alumnus Antonio Bocanegra. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to be talking about your journey mm. here at UIW. You graduated in December 22. You were a first gen college student. Um, how was that whole journey here at UIW? Sum it up for me. Um, for me, it was an, uh, an amazing experience. You know, I got to meet uh, new people. I got to experience a lot of new, new stuff. Um, I was able to hone my skill sets and what I wanted to do in after I graduated from Incarnate Word. And overall, it was basically an amazing experience just to be able to be here. What kind of student were you, Antonio? Um, I would say I was more of a hard worker and determined student. You know, for me, I love being able to um, do stuff while also helping others. So that's what I really did, of course, here in the Commerce Department. Um, I was more involved in uh, here in the television studio and I wanted to of course hone my video production skills while also helping others uh, also learning the same thing same stuff with me and what did the UIW communication arts department offer you that you kind of were able to take advantage of and that other students can as well I feel like it gave us a good space to be able to like make mistakes and be in a nice environment to be able to help each other out, have that communication and team building exercises as a group to be able to produce something beautiful, you know. That's the amazing thing about this department. It is small, but we make it count and, we, and I feel like this department is probably one of the most best and hardworking people in the, in the department. And whilst you're here in the department, you won many uh, Lone Star Emmys. This is one we here have on the table. You won seven. Yes. And you've won many awards. But what kind of went happened behind the scenes? What kind of was the work looking like to get those awards? Because it doesn't happen overnight. No, it's a lot of trial and error, determining what you want to basically um, have the vision of producing. So it was a lot of researching and determining what I felt best fit, whatever I was producing or, or creating. And eventually um, being able to produce uh, what I like to make, what I like to do is make sure that my work is professional and clean and neat that it's uh, that people can see it and share it and be able to have an experience from it. And what were some challenges you faced in your in your years here at UIW? Um, I guess for me that my challenges was of course being here in San Antonio. I'm from Houston, so um, just um, being far away from my family, not that, that far, but mm -hmm. just just being here. I was just here by myself, like as being a first generation college student. You know. Um, it was, it's, it's hard because you have to navigate life kind of by yourself. And of course you have a support system, but with my support system, my parents are from Mexico, so they kind of don't understand how the workflow of how to apply for college, how yeah. to be in college, and how to succeed in college. So that kind of was tough. But the good thing about being here in Carnet Ward is I had a great support system, of course, with the faculty members here and also the organizations I was a part of. Um, also another organization I was a part of was TRIO, and that is a good place where first-generation college students can go to. And you're now at Sam Houston at grad school. 
If you can compare freshman Antonio here at UIW to grad school student in, at Sam Houston, what would you say the biggest differences are? I guess the biggest difference is having that knowledge that I already have now and to be able just to continue on that freshman Antonio didn't have to now graduate level Antonio has to be able to produce more than I could ever before back when I was a freshman. You know, when I was a freshman, I kind of knew already some skill sets back in high school. I had some of those, but I feel like here at Carton Award, I was able to hone them. Mm -hmm. And then now at that graduate level, I've been able to use those skills that I learned here and to be able to start producing um, like uh, my first semester, which was right now in uh, the fall of 2023, I made a short film documentary and I had to do it within a whole semester. And the good thing that I already knew the experience of being able to create a short film because I made that here at Incarnate Word with a producing and directing seminar class and the digital film production two class. Mm -hmm. And with that class in uh, Sam Houston, which I had to create the documentary is like I knew how to manage the camera equipment, how I was able to execute a documentary and then how to basically uh, submit it to film festivals. And you're not just a student, but you're also working with Perry Holmes. So tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so uh, with Perry Holmes, I actually first started when I was here at Incarnate Word. Um, during the internship class, um, I became an intern with them during the summer of 2022. So I was their marketing video intern. So uh, because I'm from Houston, I got, I got to go back to Houston over the summer and to become an intern with them. So I got to be, I was able to produce um, some video projects for them. And then once my internship ended, of course, they wanted me to come back. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I had one more semester left at UIW and I didn't want that to conflict with my studies. And because I was going to be here in San Antonio, it would have been hard to go back and forth yeah. uh, producing content for them. So after I graduated, um, it took a while to get back with Perry because, of course, of um, just how what things were happening. Uh, because when I graduated, of course, it was December and holidays. usually people don't want to hire mm -hmm. uh, 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 clients during the holidays so back uh, finally in March is when I was able to go back with them part-time as a video contractor so since then I've been able to produce um, to film model homes for them corporate communication I know that we just got a new headquarters so I got to film the progression of, of the construction and it was amazing to be able to do that because it was a six month project. Oh, wow. And then now I'm currently creating a um, video series of maintenance videos for the company um, for our um, customers to be able to see how to um, do a, a lot sorts of maintenance stuff like how to fix, um, how to set up their smart deadbolt or how to um, activate their smart thermostat, something like that, okay. you know? And it's just amazing to still be able to produce content that's, you know, made for the company, but also shared with the other customers. Talking about producing content, mm -hmm. you made a short film when you were at Sam Houston. Yes. Which you won an award for. Yes, I did. So tell us about that. That's really great. Yes. Great. So for my first semester at Sam Houston, um, I was in a documentary storytelling course. And for that course, we had to create a documentary short film within a whole semester. So for me, I was like because I was mostly here in San Antonio for a while, I was like, who do I make a documentary of? And it was hard, but I relied on my good um, uh, mentor that I had in high school, who, who, who was a my broadcast, uh, broad, high school broadcast journalism advisor, and he made an impact on me, and I know for sure he made an impact on several people. So I made the documentary called The Impact of James, and the documentary is basically uh, five individuals that um, James Longoria, that's his name, uh, impacted and I combined it together to be a documentary, a short film. Oh. And it was nice to uh, be able to see the, the, uh, the final version of it because it's like to see um, for him, he did a lot during his career. He was a mu musician, he was um, a tennis player, then he went to the broadcast industry world and then he became an educator and now he is a tennis coach mm -hmm. for uh, high school. So to see all that, uh, that, what he's done so far and what he can still continue to do to just make an impact. And for me, um, it was fun making that because I got to make it about someone that really helped me when I was in high school and continues to help me because he's also a UIW alumni as well. So wow. it's, it's good Maybe to have, we'll have him on the show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's good to have, you know, those connections and to be able to produce something that really means 
that greater to you. Yeah, and you say that word rewarding, winning an award for it, I bet when you won that award, you just felt like so proud of yourself that you've put in so much hard work and it finally paid off. Yes, uh, I was ecstatic because um, just the hard work of uh, when I was producing that short film, of course I had other courses and I also was working with Perry Homes as the, all their content. So I was doing a lot of stuff during that time. And just being able to finally say, oh, I've already made, I've already made two short films, but I already have now a short film that's a documentary that has won an award for a film festival. It was for an online film festival called the Best Shorts Competition. Mm -hmm. And they do um, probably once every four months a seasonal competition. Mm -hmm. And so I won it during the December 2023 competition season. Great. That's really good. A great achievement to have. Yeah, thank you. And what would you say are some key takeaways that you had at UIW that you can find the most helpful in your, in your career path? Of course, it's always the uh, connections with uh, people here. It's the friendships and the mentorships that you get here. Um, I feel like community, uh, that here at UIW, we have a broad community of uh, different backgrounds, and that really helps mm -hmm. because if not, uh, we would probably um, not grow and have like all these nice, innovative stuff happening here at Incarnate Word. Well, thank you so much for sitting down and talking to me. Thank you for all you've done for the Communication Arts program and department. We really appreciate you. I appreciate y'all as well. I miss being here. I know it's weird coming <laughs> we miss back. miss having you. Yes, it's weird. When I come back, I, I see everyone and, they, and I get to talk to them again and see how they're doing and I get to share what I'm doing as well. And it's good to see that um, when I come back, I still have that r rapport with everyone here. Mm -hmm. And it's a great community here at UIW. Um, so thank you again. And thank you for watching. Join us on our next episode of UIW Alumni Corner.